Welcome to episode 3 of the Detroit Red Wings Franchise Mode Series. If you haven't checked out the last two episodes, please go do so right now. And it is time for us to enter the draft. I edited the trade block. One guy I think I'm looking to move is Vili Huso. I think Nedeljkovic proved he's the better goaltender. Let's see. Anyone want to trade their pick that we could move up on? A couple. A couple in the mid-round. So let's look at the draft class. We are picking 26th. So odds are there's no one too good at 26, but let's see. No way! There's a fake medium franchise guy, Tomas Rensfeld. So the top four picks, Connor Bedard is projected to go for these medium franchise. I put Mishkov and Fantilli in the game, so I know they're both high elite. That's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Let's see, this guy right here looks like a guaranteed medium elite. Kasper Haltunen. Six foot four, 200 pounds right winger, so we could package our first round pick and move up to get him potentially. Anyone else? Any other guaranteed medium elites? Not that are supposed to go in our pick range. Let's see if the scouts found anybody. Ooh, a goalie. Goalie in the second round. And then Santiago Vallette and Edward Manino. So I only have two picks, so I could just take both those guys and be happy. ETA five years, so long ETAs on both those guys. So it doesn't look like how Tunin is a guaranteed medium elite, but he likely is. So I think I might try and move up and select him. All right, it's the moment of truth. Will Connor Bedard go first overall? He will not. 83 overall medium franchise. Rensfeld is gonna be an absolute beast. But you would think that means Bedard would go two to LA. Both Byfield and Bedard as their top two players in the future. That's just scary. But they don't. They take the winger, Matvey Michkov. So will Bedard fall into the Montreal Canadiens' hands? They will take Adam Fantilli over Connor Bedard. And Shane Wright, who in my opinion should have been the consensus number one pick for Montreal. And he dropped a fourth to the Kraken. I think Connor Bedard is about to drop to fourth to the Kraken. I would love to cheese the AI and steal him here, but I'm not going to do it. Connor Bedard to the Seattle Kraken. So they've got Bedard, they've got Beniers, and they've got Wright. That's scary. We're just going to keep simming picks for a few picks. Dvorsky and Boyle, both medium elite. Benson, medium elite. Vegas might want to trade their pick. But it's too early for me to trade up. Braden Yeager, medium elite, another solid player. Medium top six there, not very good for a ninth overall. So let's view this draft class, because I want to move up and take that finish player, in which he could go at any moment. So I'm gonna I'm gonna package my pick and give it to Vancouver and see if we can move up. Giving up the 26th pick and a former first rounder who had exceptional status to move up spots. This is risky. This is risky. Of course they're going to take that. I know I should I could have gotten more back. But I think this is going to work out really well if this finished player truly is medium elite. Casper Haltunen is 70 overall medium elite. I'm happy about the trade. I hate I hate having to give up Valeno, but to move up 15 spots, you have to give up someone good. So I'm going to sim to the second round now because there's two medium elite guys. So I would love to move up to guarantee that goalie. Let's see what they have to say because they definitely would love a guy like Matt Dumba. Trade is rejected. I'm giving them two solid prospects. We're going to have to put a draft pick in here. which I, I only have a second round pick for this year. We'll give up another fourth. I don't, I'm not going to be valuing these late picks that... Highly, simply because in real life, the odds are you're not going to get anybody. But also, I'm auto picking. I'm not allowed to pick in rounds three through seven. So let's see what they say now. Trade still rejected. Not even close. It sounds like. I'll give up a fifth as well. It's quite a lot to get a second round pick right here. And the trade is accepted. Let's go. So we're just going to sim up to that pick and then see what happens. Hopefully that goalie is still there. If not, I'm going to be pretty upset. And there he is. Edward Manino. He's going to be Sebastian Cosa's competition in the future. Let's take him. Guaranteed medium elite. 54 overall. 
We're gonna send him to pick 50 as well. And Santiago Vallette, supposed to be a third round pick. Santiago Vallette, 49 overall medium elite. He's gonna be quite the project, but awesome to get a medium elite in the second round. Edward Sale, low top six. I think in a roster update, he'll be much better very soon. He's a pretty good prospect in real life. So let's see what else we got here. If anyone else got any medium elites. A high top nine, 15th overall. Buffalo, what are you doing? Another high top nine, nothing very good. Kind of a rough first round. Any other medium elites? A low elite there, who is that, Oduya? Very nice pick. So yeah, we're definitely the winners of the draft so far, other than Seattle, who's the ultimate winner. We're just gonna sim the entire draft now. I traded all my picks. So I wanted to keep it realistic. I definitely traded too many of my picks to keep it completely realistic, but you know, it is what it is. We're now at the re-sign phase, so let's see what we gotta do. Dylan Larkin, of course, is extended. Pavelski and Bertuzzi both want to come back. Pavelski, very old. Only wants a one-year deal, though, and he's still an 87 overall. Even if he drops to an 85, that could still look good. Let's look at what Bertuzzi wants now. He's not worth that. He's just flat out not worth that. One-year deal, he's not worth that. I'm not going to be keeping him at that price. That's, that would just be dumb on my part. We could replace him. Kind of weird to see Bertuzzi not in a Red Wing uniform, but that's what's about to happen. Pissick, honestly, one year, one and a half million. Not sure if he'll make the team or not, but an 80 overall defenseman, that's a low risk contract. Oli Mata, let's see what he wants. He wants a little more. I'm gonna offer him the exact same deal as Pissick. I'm planning on upgrading the defense this off season, so I might only even use one of them. We'll qualify Gustav Lindstrom. Adam Ernie doesn't want to resign, so we'll release him. He has no value anyways. Giovanni Smith, we're going to qualify. We qualified Theodore Niederbach. Now in goal, this is concerning. Alex Nedeljkovic does not want to return to Detroit. I'm not quite sure what to do about that. We don't... I mean, Huso might take over better. I don't want to... I don't, honestly, I don't even think Nedeljkovic is worth that. He was good in the playoffs for us. So that'd be a super risky deal. We're gonna qualify Justice Anunin. We're gonna qualify Jan Bednash. I'm gonna offer Joe Pavelski one year, six and a half million. That'll put us at around, we'll probably be around 70 million, with, which will leave us with 18 million cap space. And with that 18 million cap space, I'm just gonna take it right to free agency. Pavelski does resign. That's great to see. He was really good for us down the stretch. Pisic actually says no, I'm kind of surprised. But only Mata says yes, so I think Mata's gonna be our guy to keep and Pisic will let walk at that point. Prospect and a bunch of AHL guys resign. I shouldn't just say a bunch of AHL guys because one of them is Brian Lashoff and that is my cousin. Yeah, fun fact, I have a cousin in the Detroit organization. The captain of the Grand Rapids Griffins. So we're gonna release Pissick, he's not gonna be worth it. Bunch of people I qualified here, Bertuzzi. We're gonna let him go to free agency. We might go after him there, but I don't think he's gonna be worth that money. I think his overall is gonna drop. For goalies, Nedeljkovic, goodbye. I've decided just, if he's not worth it, I think Huso will rebound a bit. And if he doesn't, I will cry. <laughs> Justice Anunin accepts. Pearson accepts, New Power, Barton. Ed Nash, Niederbach, so everybody takes up their qualifying offers. I have 40 contracts right now. Let's see who we have in free agency. Hopefully some big defenseman. Nathan McKinnon is a 96 overall. Nathan McKinnon did not sign with the Avalanche quick enough in real life to have been signed in this video game. Are you kidding me? We're going for it. No one's interested. When you have a chance to get a franchise changing talent like Nathan McKinnon, you do it. We're just gonna give him exactly what he wants. No one else is interested and we'll still have 8 million over to spend. We also very much need a goalie. So let's see what we have for goalies here. See, Jari is a higher overall and wants less money than Nedeljkovic. I wouldn't mind bringing in Varlamov at that price, but look at like Ranta and Reimer. They're a little bit older, but for two years at that price, that's a really cheap backup. We could go with the tandem goalies for with Huso and whoever I pick for a couple years, and at that point, I think Costa would be ready. 
So Cam Talbot wants a two-year, $1.8 million a year contract. And for one year, he wants $1.85. I'm going to pay him a little extra just to make sure we get him. He's an 84 overall for $2 million bucks is an absolute steal. So we have a lot of good goalie prospects, but Tristan, I'm not sure if it's Lennox or Leno, is 20 years old, 71 overall. We're going to offer him a contract. Cody Glass is a free agent too. He's low elite, former sixth overall pick by the Vegas Golden Knights. He's definitely a guy I'd be super interested in, especially at that low price. He might really be good for us. I'm going to offer him a little bit less than he wants because I'm not going to go over the top hoping I get him. Dominic Bach is here, medium top six. Two years for 950k. He might end up making the team, be a steal of a contract. If not, he's a solid young player for the AHL team. No picks required, he is an RFA. For some reason, the Blues did not sign Scott Peronovich, who was a really, really good player in college. He wants one year 950k. We're absolutely going to offer him that. Hopefully, we'll get him. Now, looking at defenseman, Matt Dumba is the top guy out there, but he's quite expensive. So I'm not quite sure if he's the one I'm going to go for, especially with three teams interested. Sandheim signed that big extension with Philly in real life. I believe the AAV was about, actually about what he was asking for here. I'm going to see if there's any budget beasts. So I'm going to be offering Eric Johnson a contract here. One year, four and a half million. It's nice that he only wants a one year deal because most of these defensemen, I feel like long term, will not work out. So let's offer Eric Johnson. We're stealing players from Colorado. Big trade over here. Two second round picks for Kopp, a third, and Mata. I'm going to say no. I'm not trading only Mata. Eric Johnson accepts. That's very nice. Cody Glass is looking for a team that's more of a playoff contender, even though we won our division last year, so that's too bad. Cam Talbot accepts, so we have our tandem with Talbot and Huso now. So Peronovic accepts. We'll see if the Blues match that offer, which they should, but who knows. Tristan Leno accepts. Dominic Bach also accepts. Hopefully, Carolina also doesn't match. Now, here's the big sim day. Do we get Nathan McKinnon? Let's go! We get Nathan McKinnon! And the Detroit Red Wings future is all of a sudden looking really bright. The Hurricanes match the offer to Dominic Bach. And the Blues also, unfortunately, are going to be signing Scott Peronovich. All right, we're going to just sim to next season, and I'll let you know if any big trade offers pop up. This is a big one here, and it's a little bit tempting, I'm not going to lie. Andrew Kopp in a third and fourth for Jonas Brodeen and a fourth. Our defense definitely needs more help than anything. I just don't like that Brodeen is signed for five more years. I feel like it would be a bit unrealistic to trade Andrew Kopp as Stevie Y just signed him, so I'll decline it. Big offer here, a second and a third for Kopp and Sherratt. I'm going to go by my rule that they have to have two years left on their deal, I've decided, even though I'm not the one who actually signed them, because that 10 million cap space would be phenomenal. But we're keeping Cobb and Sherratt. Adam Ernie decided to sign a one-year deal with the Chicago Blackhawks. Poor guy deciding to go there. There were no big trade offers for the rest of the offseason, so I'm seeing where any other big free agents went. Jonas Donskoy to New Jersey, Paul Byron to Tampa, Giovanni Smith was re-signed by us off camera, Carl Haglin to Nashville, Ryan Reeves to the Arizona Coyotes, Phil Kessel to Washington, so I guess I should have done this right after the deadline, but we'll see where people are throughout the season. So that'll do it for this episode. Let me know what you think of my free agent moves down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching.